Yo, what's up everybody? Joey J. Ping here checking in live, respectmyregion.com. Coming with you guys live from the 2020 floor. MJ Unpacked Atlantic City. We're in New Jersey, y'all. We're here. It's a great time. I got a couple special guests. We got Sarah, got Justin, Aptitude Plus Consulting. You guys are killing it. We got cannabis retail. We just talked about manufacturing. We got a law background, expansion moves. It was overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you guys tell the people who you are, what y'all do. And I know you guys are excited because New Jersey and New York, there's exciting stuff happening. Sure. It's yeah. all happening. Sarah, happening. we're going to start with you. Yeah. Who are you? What do you do for Aptitude Plus? Uh, so I'm Sarah Stretchberry, uh, COO of Aptitude Plus, Justin Singer, my partner. Um, we've been at this for about three years now. Okay. Uh, we provide application services for folks, write applications, win licenses. Um, and then we help folks get operational uh, once they've won those licenses. That's huge. Huge. Those are all those three things that you said you do. Yeah. So nothing about oh, filling out paperwork. Uh, one of those kids where I would fill it all out and not, not even strategy. Name on it. It's it's a strategy. A glow for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. When we started out. It was you know usually, and I've been doing this for like eight years. That okay. you know, I'm like super competitive, limited license markets. You're putting in thousand page applications, but there's only maybe three licenses available. Oh my god, applicant. Right. Um, and so Sarah and, and I always work like winning, well, right? Winning, winning. Got a, yes. a great Don't leave that out. Of success. <laughs> but um, you got to shoot the shots. And there's people that miss a lot of shots, and there's people yeah. that make a lot of there's, shots. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into winning a license. But then we found there's been this transition in the marketplace where a lot of the on the medical licenses, a lot of our clients in the beginning were large MSOs. By and large, they knew what to do once they won the license. But as there's been this transition to adult use, there's a lot more. Uh, mom and pop operators who right. are new to the industry haven't been in it before. We went on the license, and then they're the proverbial dog that caught the car. Right. I don't know what to do next. Absolutely, yeah. so that's where yeah. like the next phase of the business is really taking off, which Sarah really spearheads, which is yeah. helping those clients actually get their business open and operation. Right? Yeah, it's a it's like first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, Correct. but then the second half. It kind of never ends because the business is ready. Like you get to the finish line and you've opened your floor or your facility uh, and really it's just starting. You go 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I find that to be really interesting. I've only been a part of a couple, probably two or three openings with stores as a marketing agency. Okay. And it's chaotic. There's a lot that goes into it. Organization, oh communication, yep. people want to burn themselves out just getting to that point yep. in some cases. Yep. For you guys... You guys have a plethora of experience. As you mentioned, you've got a lot of wins under the belt. You have a couple, you have a new location, uh, another location. There's a, there's moves. Yeah. In your opinion, what was the most important thing it took for you guys to get to the point where you were at just, we're, we're, we, we got the paperwork done, we're, we won the license. How, what was the most important part for that part of it? Honestly, I would say the most important part is just recognizing the opportunity when it arose, right? right. Being early entrance to the market is really important. Okay. So like, for instance, in New Jersey, as soon as New Jersey passed the adult use bill, I mean, I'm a lawyer by trade, so started analyzing the law, seeing how the market was going to develop, where the opportunities were, 70% of all the municipalities in New Jersey opting out. The map becomes very important. Wow. Where do you want to locate yeah. your business? What Lord are the strategy that goes in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and if you're not strategic about the decisions that you're making, you might as well not not do it, right? Here. I've lived in two markets during my career yeah. for cannabis, Washington and California, and there are large sections of those states right. that are not legal. That's right. There's this weird yep. gray, black medical market that's staying for there. Yeah. It's very interesting mm -hmm. how all of these states are similarly different in terms of the types of problems or the types of things or right. gaps yeah. that are there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's something that you see right now in New York. It's a huge problem, right? And I think it has to do a lot with the way that they rolled out the program and granted the mistakes that they made in rolling out the program where they had an infrastructure of licensed medical operators yeah. who could have been the first entrance into the adult use market. But instead, the state said, we don't want to have them be the first movers in the market. We want to provide opportunities for justice-involved individuals, which is a great yeah. concept and idea. Sure. But the problem is it took them so long to roll them out. Right. And there was this gap in a vacuum where it was decriminalized and legalized, but they didn't have licensed stores. That's where the opportunities come in. Insert the market example. Exactly. Ballooning with problem. Hey, Dak, Paul, look at Very hard to put that genie back in the right. bottle. Right. Whereas New Jersey didn't do that. When right. they rolled out adult use, it was the existing medical operators that were the first entrance into the market. They killed it. For right. the first year or so that they were the only ones in the market. And now there's independent operators who have come online 
But honestly, that's the better way to do it because you're not going to run into these problems like you're running right. into in New York. Well, I'm make sure, sure there, there are illicit market operators out there in New Jersey. It's always going to be. But nothing like you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Not as open it's and glorious and delineant as it sounds in New York. Yeah, yeah. Interesting cultural differences. You think about the variety of the communities. You think about the different types of problems that these communities have or don't have. Yeah. Ultimately, people are different everywhere. Yeah. And the way that America is set up is that everything's kind of different all over the place. We all, the states govern themselves, right? Yeah. And so for you guys, you're operating in multiple areas. You've got experience in multiple places. As you mentioned, you know, the, just even just the experience with California and understanding where New York is at. What are you guys most excited about in terms of your, where your work today? What's, what's that? exclusive thing coming from you guys yeah look, I'm just I, excited about I'd gosh. say um, look we've been I, I'm a partner at a, at a law firm that's been in New York City uh, was planning the firm eight years ago we've been doing this work here a lot of people in the beginning said why are you starting a cannabis firm and a cannabis consulting company in New York City right isn't all the action on the West Coast and you just have these medical markets here the we knew that the market was going to head this direction and that, that is finally here now. Right. right. For the longest time, you'd have all these California, West Coast brands be like, I don't have any interest in being in another market. We're just going to focus on what we're doing. Now that the New York market is open, right. if you want to be a brand, you have to be in the New York market. So you're starting to see all these major brands come yeah. into that market. And that's where it's becoming really exciting that the opportunity is finally here yeah. in our home base in the tri-state area. And this yeah. is the epicenter of legal cannabis. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. All right. Now, you guys... Then let's take this one a little bit more personal. What's what's the most fire thing smoking out here in the Northeast? <laughs> yeah, where, where where do we get the good stuff at? Because New York is the is the outdoor and the I mean, sun grown and so. Just one. I'm just saying hey, you could you operator. you can call out a couple. Oh we just want to show some yeah. love. Look, look, there's a real. Oh, where's uh, the fire? Who's got there's it? There's a new operator that just uh, lost in New Jersey called Garden Greens. Yeah. Okay, they are putting out incredible uh, product. Love it, and they've got some great partnerships. Right. They, uh, Garden State Bananas and a couple other brands that they're okay. So that's who's rolling out yeah, that yeah, Nick's yeah. Nick's Golden State Banana line. Yeah. I love it. For their facility, they got a beautiful available uh, at Sweet City, beautiful facility down in Violin, New Jersey, and yeah, available in our dispensary yeah. in Mayfield, New Jersey, Kansas yeah. City. Now, before we get out of here, talking to you about the dispensary. Sure. How was that? What's that been like? Oh so, man, like, it's a ride. What are y'all trying to be known for? What is yeah. what is what is that? Where we at? We're trying to be known for being a part of the community, you know, and just and and be the place where it, anyone can come into. Like we we don't want to cater to just one subsection of the consumer base. We're we're about everyone, right? So we try to provide variety in our menu. We try to provide a very comfortable, welcoming space for everyone. Um, a lot of our a lot of our employees are locally hired, and they're just they're part of the Plainfield community. You know, it's a it's a great store. We've got tons of parking. Uh, late hours, um, you know, I, we, we just, we try to give a little bit to everyone. What's your favorite part about it? We're rolling out a... I can feel the patch. Delivery. Oh. Next week as well. So starting the 16th, you heard it here first. Is this the... Oh, oh, oh. All my exclusive... Do, 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 do. Delivery coming. Oh, let's go. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, to me, it's the authenticity yeah. of the store that really, like, rings true with a lot of customers. It's not just, you know, trying to build out another, like, Apple store version of a dispensary that doesn't have any ties to the community. It doesn't feel authentic to either the community or cannabis. People come in, they're like, oh, this feels like a kind of place that I want to be. Right. You guys get it. You get the community. Oh, Justin's yeah. here. I really, I know Justin. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's the vibe that I think we've done a really good job on. That's it. On and uh, that keeps people coming back. Uh, one of the one of the things that I love most about our dispensary too is we have this big pass through window, so you actually get to see like how the magic is made, right? Like, see straight back into the dispensary uh, vault area, right, or fulfillment area, and you actually get to see the guys like picking and packing the order. So That's pretty cool. Kind of like peeling that, love that. Uh, curtain a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just it's a great experience. And the restaurants where I get to watch them cook. That's it. That's good. That's I enjoy it. They tend to have great reviews or experiences or just more engagement. Yes. And those touch points at the end of the day from a human element, really powerful to learn. Yeah. And then to continue growing. It's part of like demystifying and like destigmatizing the industry. Yeah. It's not some magic thing happening behind the wall. We have to open up the right. secret door to get the yeah. for fulfillment, which is how most right. dispensaries operate. It can be open and people see that and they're like, oh, this is. This operates like any other normal industry right. in a legal market. I yeah. think that's important. And not just demystifying, but destigmatizing, right? I mean, you don't get buzzed in. There's no 
you know, like. Triple, I went through a dispensary yesterday. I won't say know, which one. Process. And I was like, no one said bye. Oh, that's great. And the reason nobody said bye was because once I left, the exit was a door. Man trap. And then a hallway yeah. and a door that I had to wait till the other door closed. Right. So I walked into the door. Yeah. And then I walked out. No. And it was just the oddest thing to go backwards from a retail perspective. Totally. One of the great things about New Jersey is that they've really, like, they've allowed for this, right? You can bring your kid in with you to a dispensary in New Jersey. Oh, wow. So that's a store. You're not able to do that. And as a parent, that's important for me. The fact that I I leave your kid into a liquor store, right, to buy a bottle of wine, and I can't bring them into a dispensary if I'm just going to buy some, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of a message is that same. Like if you legalized it, then it is. So we really leaned into that, and we wanted it to just function as any other retail space, and I think we accomplished it, and it feels really good. I really enjoyed the conversation with you guys today. I can feel the passion. I can also sense the excitement. What is the name of the dispensary again? It's uh, Queen City Dispensary in Queen City, New Jersey. We got another project coming up in June, uh, Boontown Provisions, opening up in Boonton, New Jersey. Okay. And we got a store that we're, uh, we're working on, another project in, uh, in Yonkers uh, called The Plant, which will be open in about a month. Three different brands, three retailers making moves. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys. It's inspiring and exciting. Yeah. Now, do you have anything else you'd like to share with the people before we get you out of here? Thank you for Ben. No, I'd say, uh, look, just uh, I know there's a lot of Harper on what's happening in the New York market right now. Yeah. I'd say keep your head up. Yeah. The the market is moving. Uh, there's always going to be uh, haters and naysayers, but the, the market is moving in the right direction, and it's going to look a lot different a year from now than it does. So yeah. good insider perspective right there. And also, too, we need some positivity, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I appreciate y'all. Where can yeah. people find or learn more about the consulting firm, or how can they reach out? Yeah, uh, come to our website, www.aptitudeplus.com. Um, and, uh, aptitude yeah. Aptitude with two Ps. Right, correct. Aptitude. Aptitude with two Ps. Correct. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, and you can come by Queen City anytime and buy some Union support. I just didn't see any so Yeah. Man. Hey, and for anybody that goes to the shop, make sure you guys leave some Google reviews, show love, give them feedback. We always appreciate that. Thank you guys for being on the show. It was great energy. Yeah. Sarah, thank you for your time. Appreciate thank you guys. You. Hey, we're at MJ Unpack in Atlantic City. This is my first time being here. There's some really great people that care a lot about cannabis. Make sure you guys tap in. We'll see you in the next episode. We out!